So um, we're back on the Z28 today, and uh, the last video you guys saw was our turbo kit. We got the turbo kit 100% done. So we are completely finished with turbo kit, which was really exciting. So if you haven't seen that, go ahead and hit that video and check it out. But um, today we're going to go ahead and start off in showing you guys some parts we got for the Camaro. So we'll go ahead and start off by uh, showing you guys that we got the uh, Rife sensors by Motion Braceworks, the four sensor block. Now this is their... Um, not the custom configuration one this is i think their boost uh ready one or whatever they call it so it comes with 300 psi transducers and a four bar map sensor so um, the reason why we chose this is one we're going to use uh, one for fuel pressure we're going to have our dome pressure sensor obviously our manifold pressure off the back of the intake manifold and um, i think potentially we're probably going to use this last guy for uh, coolant pressure the nice thing about this block is that we can always change things up and uh, always decide, you know, if we wanted to not use coolant pressure, we could use oil pressure. But since the uh, the Holly Dominator, we already have an oil pressure sensor. We figured we might as well use the OEM location. And obviously, if we have some hard issues or they keep going out on us or whatever, we'll go ahead and switch it to the right uh, sensor. That way, we know it's more accurate and whatnot. So moving on, we got our derail or derail, however the hell you want to say it. I know a couple people say it completely different, but we got our transmission cooler. Now this is for the um, aftermarket power glide, or aftermarket case power glide. And uh, we opted for the 20 foot long uh, Fergola uh, line for motion brakes work as well. All right, so now we're in the car and here's our leash board. It's all done up, ready to go. We just got to run everything, all of these wires to wherever they need to go. And this is where we put our boost controllers. So it's just a dual Mac valve setup. We got a nice little Deutsch connector on here. so. Two of these will go to the Holly, and two of these will go to power. So we can start terminating some power um, coming off of the board right there. So like I mentioned, a lot of these we can start actually running. A couple of these have to go through the firewall. And uh, right there is our hole. And we used a uh, Earl seals it fitting. And yeah, it worked out pretty good. I was mentioning to you guys, we did get a lot of new parts in and uh, we actually wanted to wait to show you guys this. And when we saw this on uh, Motion Raceworks website, we kind of just knew we had to have it just because one, we needed one, and two, we weren't sure what style to get. So yeah, here it is. That, and that is the new operator shifter from Motion Raceworks. So this is a Summit Racing three and a half inch uh, riser. And what we did is just put some nut plates into the floor and then obviously use some hardware. This is actually the hardware that came with the uh, Holly intake manifold. So it's nice little 12 point stuff. And you got your wires for your shifter. So yeah, really simple. Got another Earl seals it fitting for the cable right there. But yeah, I mean, this shifter is one, super nice. Um, two, it's extremely solid. Like it's not going anywhere. And uh, yeah, we just really wanted to get this just because it's one-handed. Yeah, I can't even do it with this hand. But there we go. Let's just go back to the right hand. So yeah. One-handed operation, it's got reverse lockout, neutral safety switch built in. And yeah, I mean, it's super easy. It's super nice looking. And uh, yeah, I think it was a very clean install. So the really nice thing about this is we have two sensors for neutral and reverse. So when we put it in reverse, if we wire it correctly, we should not have to hold the trans brake button to move. All right guys, so it's been a few days since uh, giving you a little update, so. Um, the last uh, portion of the video you just saw, um, intake was still on and we still had a few things to finalize like water pumps uh, or water pump and fans and things like that. So um, over that course of time, we have the fans 100% wired. We have the water pump 100% wired. We have all of our boost control lines back on. We have our power tap wire for our alternator. So this is our excite wire for the alternator. Um, we have our fuel pressure sensor. We have a coolant pressure sensor all buttoned up. We got a rife sensor over there and we got it wired. So that's really nice. And um, yeah, so we got just a few things laying around here. Try to kind of tighten up this bundle a little bit. That way we lay the intake manifold right on top. So it's been a few days of wiring, a few days of cleaning some stuff up. So we were waiting on a little connector for our starter for the LS style starter. Um, the one that we got was obviously it takes this little plug for the main uh, switch wire. I got our crank sensor, crank sensor plugged in. 
we relocated our coolant temp sensor. And as you might know, we're using the ripe sensor for our MAP sensor and fuel pressure sensor. So um, had a quick chat with Steven, the guy who sold us um, the wiring kit and the leash board and the race wire solutions switch panel. Now, um, talking to him, I was going to try to use the input and output auxiliary harness off of the main harness. And that plan quickly uh, deteriorated because I can't do it. So not a big deal. Um, I should have did a little bit more research before I tried starting to do that, but we figured it out. Um, Use the map sensor wiring off of the main harness. So what I did is cut it out of the main harness and actually ran it all the way back through here. And you can see I've got my tape on here now. Um, so now the map sensor wiring is in here for our five volt, our ground and our map signal wire. We have our fuel pressure signal wire and we have two, uh, two more inputs, which would be just two inputs for our, let's see, our dome pressure sensor and coolant pressure sensor. So that's how you see all six of those wires right there. So it was actually kind of, it was actually a little bit easier. So now all we have to do is make two inputs on the J2A or J2B for the dominator. And now we will have a dome pressure sensor and a coolant pressure sensor. So technically everything up front on the engine side is done minus the injector harness, which is right there. And then obviously our coil pack harnesses, but those um, will probably just use the OEM factory one. We have our current, uh, current specialties uh, injector harness. And then, yeah, so everything up front is done. So alternator's good, fans, stone pressure. I mean, we're, we're set up here, so that's really cool. And more importantly, we got a ripe sensor all wired up and plumbed. So all we need to do is put the intake manifold back on and that will be 100%. So it's really good. Um, one thing we do have to do is actually extend our flex fuel sensor. As you guys are know, know, we got this from the current performance and wiring or current wiring, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, current performance wiring, there you go. So this is for our flex fuel sensor that's about three quarters of the way back. And obviously this is not long enough. So we're gonna have to extend this, which isn't a big deal. But I went ahead and ran it through the bulkhead anyway because it runs off of the Holly power tap. Right here is our connector for the Holly power tap. And this little blue wire will go to the input on the dominator. So this will be our flex fuel output sensor. And then we'll have, here we have our uh, colon pressure and dome pressure. Um, the other two, the map sensor was a fixed input and same thing with the fuel pressure. This is for our boost control inputs right here. We got a fuel level sensor for this guy right here. Trans brake, data log. I mean, we're getting everything buttoned up. So yeah, we're making uh, some damn good progress right now. Um, still a lot of wiring. We have to hook up our ignition to this red wire. And this green wire, we're probably just gonna bundle it up because this will be a all time 12 volt. Um, this is off the main harness and this is a, one of the loose wires. This is supposed to um, used to be for a fuel pump, but this uh, will not support our fuel pump that we have. Um, blue wire, I think is for the tachometer, which we don't have. So this will just not get used as well, but no big deal. So we're definitely getting a lot closer, which is really exciting. It's really nice. Um, and we're trying to do this methodically and do it once and do it right. So the next big thing for the car is getting a transmission and getting a dump valve and a uh, more sensors wired up, trans temp, charge pressure, uh, converter pressure, and all that good stuff. So once we get the transmission, we can actually start um, continuing on that. I'm gonna have to make a nice sub harness for that. So I'm actually pretty excited to do so. Um, that way I can make one of my harnesses from scratch. So I'm really excited to do that. I think the wiring process is long, but it is very rewarding once it's done. So that's gonna wrap up today's episode, you guys. Like always, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. You guys have been killing in the comments lately and the subscriptions. We really appreciate all the help and support. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video and drop a subscription. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next episode, you guys.